Hello, today is April 30th, 2016. We had a few calls Thursday night. We had a MJT target of 2093.69. I said the risk of failure was increased and that unless we had a gap over this high, which was unlikely, that uh, Thursday's pattern was negative and that lower prices should print. I said we could have a rally first, but if we were to continue on the downside, we should have a gap down and promptly take out these lows. You have to look at futures prices rather than the cash prices, and you can see the software tells you in futures there was a gap down. We did promptly take out the lows, and that's what we needed to continue down. We had a very interesting pattern in the afternoon when I wrote a book. The rule I had was that in order to see higher prices, we had to have the high of this bar exceed the high of this one. It did, so according to the book, this high was called to be exceeded most likely by early Monday. When the software was written, it was written so that the close rather than the high of this bar had to exceed the high of this one. If not, lower prices were forecast and any uh, move with staying power would be delayed past a certain time. So the question is, which of these rules works? And the answer is each rule works because the list of failed targets with either rule is exactly the same. That means that the MJT system called for higher prices, lower prices, and for any move with staying power to begin after this time, and all those things happen. We don't have any new MJT targets, but we do have some useful um, signals from uh, Friday's action. The one thing that's always been a problem with the um, negative uh, bent that I have is that we have not had a decay in um, breath. We started to have this decay in breath Friday. It's not much, but at least it's a start. There are a number of positive things in Friday's action, all of which would be invalidated if we promptly took out these lows, ideally by gapping under them. One is we gapped down, hit a series of lower lows, couldn't hold on to any of the lows, and couldn't even hold on to this high. Unless we get the invalidation, it should lead to higher prices, and we still have this 2093.69 target. At the lows, you can see we had a sequential buy signal on the 15-minute chart, and we had bar 13 of a combo buy signal finishing early. At the 78-minute chart, you can see a TDST line from way back here, which provided support at the lows. We did fall out of this um, Andrews pitchfork, and that was the first indication of trouble. But if you connect these lines here, you'll see we stopped right at a support trend line, and the, this one held. If you connect all these critical highs here, you'll see it's this was a resistance. This is support from that, and this is support from that. So we really stopped right at support. Um, we still have this failed target here. Targets tend to fail under two circumstances. One is at major changes in trend, and the other is when you have a strong impulsive move in the other direction. If this holds, and we have all kinds of support at this level, if this holds, I think 2093.69 is a reasonable target. If it fails, if we gap under this low, or at least trade under it promptly, support has failed. This is likely to be a major change in trend and the start of an impulsive move down. It's basically a mini crash scenario if we gap under this early. So the call for Monday is if these lows hold, we should see higher prices with this 
not necessarily Monday, but at some point being a reasonable target. But if we gap under these lows or gap down and trade under them promptly, it could be a huge drop. And that is today's call.